Inside Marquette Basketball with Buzz Williams is brought to you in part by AirTran Airways. For low fares for over 50 cities, book at AirTran.com. Don't give up the sport, give up the pain. Talk to the Aurora Sports Medicine Institute. And by U.S. Bank, a proud sponsor of Marquette Athletics. All of us serving you. Welcome to Inside Marquette Basketball with Buzz Williams. Dennis Krause with the coach. Marquette has done a lot of great things in the Big East Conference, but until last Saturday, they had not beaten Syracuse in conference play. They did it in front of a sellout crowd at the Bradley Center. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. The atmosphere was unbelievable. I, I thought it was as good as it's been in a long time, and I think that really helped our guys. Let's go through it, and let's start in the first half when you guys built up a lead and were shooting very well, 54% in the first half. I, I thought uh, our, our offense helped our defense. I thought our offense was uh, with great poise. I thought we only took one bad shot. I thought we did a really good job of getting it to the high post, attacking it on the baseline, their zone. Um, and I, I, thought, I thought our guys handled it very well. Syracuse then, after trailing by 11 at half, they got hot in the second half and shot 68%. What did they do differently? Well, they scored, they scored the first 11 points. So I don't know, I think maybe it was five possessions. Um, again, slow start, bad body language, bad uh, engagement relative to our mentality. I don't necessarily think our offense was bad. I just thought our defense was was porous, and you can't you can't you can't do that. Jay Crowder had 25 points. The thing that strikes me about him is twice when Syracuse had rallied to within four, and also once when they had tied it. Jay came up with that basket. He's he's the silencer, isn't he? As he's, far as a rally, he's just uh, he made those. The, the, you're exactly right. He made big baskets at critical times. Uh, one of them, one of those baskets was an and one. Uh, he just, he's hard to take off the floor, uh, and that's why when he's not in foul trouble, he's on the floor, and that's why we we don't need him to ever be in foul trouble. We need him, and we need him on offense just as much as we need him on defense. I thought he did a really good job. You know, uh, we were able to play Chris and Devonte almost exclusively at the five, which you almost have to do against uh, Syracuse. But uh, I thought Jay's help coverage on ball screens and help coverage away from the ball was tremendous. Jimmy Butler had 19 points, including a pair of huge three-pointers both times with the shot clock draining down. Yeah, I thought the one that he hit on the right wing, uh, you could argue, was a bad shot. Time was running out. And then the one that he hit there at the end in the corner on our side of the bench out of the timeout uh, was, was the game winner, I thought. DJO also with the clinching three with about a minute left. He played well for you, had 17 points. I thought he, hand, I thought he grew up on Saturday. Um, didn't think he played very well against UConn. Thought he played really well against Syracuse. Set out those eight minutes, the eight minutes that he set out when he had four fouls. Uh, I thought Vander and Junior did a really good job. And I told DJ when he came out, and I said, look, you got to stay with us because we're going to need you to help us win the game. And then the shot that he made, um, you know, it, uh, pancaked around the two shots that Jimmy made, but what made DJ shot was Dwight penetrating and drawing help on time on target pass. It was big, big shot. Great win, 76 to 70. Marquette now 14 and 8 overall, 5 and 4 in the Big East. And I think it's important to point out you were facing a desperate Syracuse team that had come in on a three-game losing streak. They wanted this win just as badly. Well, I didn't realize. I knew that since I had been employed here, Dennis, that we had never beat Syracuse. Um, the two times we had played and we got blown out at their place last year, we lost by five, and then we got beat here by five in overtime on senior day, our first year here, my first year here. Uh, I didn't realize that we hadn't beat them in, uh, since we had been included in the Big East. I think they're really good. I think they have two first-round picks, and um, I think Coach Beheim is uh, one of the best. Obviously, he's already been enshrined in the Hall of Fame. It's just the how volatile our league is and it's how hard our league is there's no way around it and that's why even when you win you're so excited and slash relieved you have to get ready for the next one and even when you lose when you're so disappointed and so bitter you got to get ready for the next one because you can't let one loss or win take you down the wrong path. Well, you guys did a great job of preparing for Syracuse after an unfortunate 76-68 loss to UConn last Tuesday night at the Bradley Center. Overall, how did you feel your team played in that one? Well, I, I thought we were okay. Uh, I, I didn't think that our offense helped our defense um, very much at all. I thought we took too many quick shots. And I, I don't mind us taking quick shots, Dennis, uh, relative to time score and momentum. 
uh, but it's like Syracuse. If you turn the ball over against them, it's a layup. It's for sure it's a layup. When you turn the ball over against UConn, as potent as they are offensively, it really hurts your team. And we didn't finish the game, and that's all coaching. It's all my fault. But you can't let a team score 10 out of their last 14 possessions. You can't do that. And then the other thing is this. <clears throat> we had 11 assists on the game. At the 10-minute uh, mark in, to go in the game, we had 10. So the last 10 minutes of the game, we had one assist. Those two things combined are not good team offense, and that's not good team defense. Against uh, Syracuse, we made 23 baskets. 17 of them were assisted. We out-rebounded, other than Cincinnati, the biggest team in our league, by two. Well, if, if you're not guarding anybody uh, on consecutive possessions, you're not going to get stops. And if you're trying to score by yourself, not scoring on assisted baskets, you're going to get beat on the glass as well. It's, it's a culmination. It's favor and failure. Favor and failure are associated. Where does it start? Did it start on this possession or was it the possession before? It's the snowball effect. And uh, we had favor on Saturday, but we had favor because we were doing what we were supposed to do. Uh, the last uh, eight minutes against UConn, we had failure. Which, which possession was it? Was it? was it this offensive possession? Was it this defensive possession? They're associated. Where do they start? Where do they end? And that's why you have to do right every possession. Well, you're exactly right. There was a span there, I believe, seven misses, three turnovers in your offensive possessions. Went without a field goal for about nine minutes. Kemba Walker, 5 of 16, season low 14 points. You guys did a solid job on him defensively. You know, I, uh, similar to when we played Notre Dame here, uh, with all that surrounds Ben Hansborough and right behind him, uh, Abramidas. I thought our team was really good. Our team was really good. Yes, DJO was really good. Yes, Bikes was good. Yes, Jimmy was good on those two particular Notre Dame guys. When we got back from Notre Dame on the bus, I had not completely studied UConn, but I told our team, Kimball Walker is National Player of the Year. He is going to be National Player of the Year, but they are not the fifth-ranked team in the country and have only lost two games because of one guy. You can't do that at this level. One guy can propel you to that, but he can't finish all of that. And I thought we did a good job on Kimba Walker. But as good of a job as you could say that we did on Kimba Walker, we did that poor of a job on Jeremy Lamb. Jer Jeremy Lamb was on campus on three different occasions at Marquette. I love the kid. I love his dad. His dad's a pastor. Uh, he, I love his family. Love his family. And every single time he came here, he, he was not very good. He was not very good, and he wanted to come, uh, but he, 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 he was the reason why they beat us, not Kimball Walker, and again, that's team defensive specific, uh, but somebody's got to guard him. Lamb had 24 points, DJO 18, Jimmy Butler 21, and he becomes in our AirTran Key Stat of the Week just the 42nd player in Marquette history to reach 1,000 points, and he's three rebounds away as we tape this from 500 rebounds, and that would be a combination that only 19 guys have done. I, I'm really proud of him. Um, when Scott gave us the ball to present to him prior to the Syracuse game, I don't even know that Jimmy knew what it was about unless Scott told him. I didn't tell him. I think it's a pretty remarkable story, to be honest with you, uh, how he got here, how I got here, how he got here, uh, and then what he's been able to do since he's been here. And uh, he didn't visit. I never called him, never wrote him a letter. I, I told his people after the fact, I said, uh, if he's our eighth or ninth man, then, then, then we're pretty good. If he's better than our eighth or ninth man, then I'm not doing a good job of putting people around him. Uh, we, we can't play two possessions three years later without him, so that tells you how much I know. And from what he showed in those last two games, I think he's coming on to where you need him to be I for the stretch. I, I, he's, he's been really good, and he realizes the finality of mm -hmm. it's about to be over, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the rest of my life, so I'm going to really absorb where I'm at right now, and he's been really fun to be around. When we come back, Steve the Homer True with Jamel Jones. Stay with us inside Marquette Basketball with Buzz Williams.
back with the coach. How did Jamel Jones wind up at Marquette? Well, it's a long story. He's from Atlanta, uh, and he spent his senior year at a prep school in Florida, arguably coached by uh, one of the best high school coaches in the country. Uh, he's one of the coaches on the Nike coaching clinic circuit. Uh, got to know his AAU coach, got to know his parents, came here three times unofficially, came to camp last summer. He is a beautiful human being who, even though he's not playing, is going to end up being a really good player for us. They call him Mello, the U.S. Bank, up close with Homer segment. Jamal Jones, what's been the biggest adjustment going from high school to playing Big East basketball? Um, I would say just the intensity, the pace, um, not taking plays off, not taking possessions off, because uh, playing in the Big East, you have to bring it every night. What made you want to play at Marquette? I always think Dwayne Wade, the school, the Big East, Buzz Williams, you certainly had a choice of a number of schools. Why Marquette? Um, I just like, like the tradition you have, uh, just the intensity, that, how hard we work, and uh, just our mentality, just the, the aggressive, the tough mentality. I like it. Do you remember the first time you met Buzz? Uh, first, day, first time I met Buzz was we had a meeting in his office. I was here with one of my AAU teammates, and um, he just kept going on and on about these numbers. Uh, I realized he was a number freak, so he just talked about numbers, and uh, he introduced himself to me. I introduced myself, and uh, ever since then, we've had a pretty good relationship. Numbers in terms of? Um, he was just breaking down how many college athletes it was. The, uh, the year that I visited, he was just breaking it down how many college athlete teams it was and how many players on each team and uh, how many players actually make the NBA. So he was just breaking down all the numbers behind that. It was pretty interesting. Not that you favor a teammate, but any of your teammates that really impress you, that you maybe knew of them and then you come here and you watch them play? Uh, the White Bikes. I really, I really grown real close to the White Bikes. He's really taking me under his wing this year, just telling me, teaching me and everything that I need to do to get better for when he leaves next year. Now you are not Jamail to the team. Mm -hmm. I believe you're, you have your nickname. Yeah, Mello. Well, how? Uh, well, that, uh, I forgot that nickname in middle school. I'm just a real laid back, chill, mellow type of guy. Just, uh, I really don't go outside my box too much. I just like to have fun. Uh, when I'm not around a lot of people, I'm just chill, laid back, quiet type. I don't think you can be mellow on the floor though and play for Buzz Williams. Not playing for Buzz Williams, no. Always like to finish with the spot on the floor you'd like to be on. The uh, game is on the line. It's a perfect world, Jamel. Okay. Or excuse me, Mello. Okay. This it right there? Oh, this is it right here. You're gonna shoot a three right there. Right here. Right there. Right here. All right, I'll pass it to no you. No warm up, no nothing. I'm ready. <laughs> warm ready. up. I don't need a warm, warm up. I'm ready. Up. All right. That's what I'm saying. I'm ready. No lack of confidence. No lack of confidence. Marquette down two. Okay. Where would you like it? Chest high? Yeah, about right, right here. Right there. Marquette down two. Mello. At his spot, three, two, one, for the win! Pure, watch it, spin go, right baby. back to him. There'll be one, won't they? Yes, sir. There'll be one one day. One day. Jamel Mello. They just know you as Mello, yeah, right? Yeah. They don't even know your name anymore. No. Meet Mello, give him a nice smile. Jamel Jones. As he develops, what does he need to do to get on the floor? Well, I think he's getting better defensively. That would be the first thing is uh, it's not so much what position can you play offensively, it's what position can you guard defensively. And I think he's getting to the point uh, where he understands angles, he understands how hard he has to play, he understands the intensity involved in every possession. He's a really bright kid. He understands the game. He's really smart off the floor. And I think his intelligence is in allowing him to skip a couple of steps. The things that you can't skip though, Dennis, are the things that every player has to realize and learn is how hard you have to play, how physical every possession is, how important it is for you to do your job every possession. And he's, he's really improving. And uh, I, I think, you know, he's, he's not gonna play uh, in front of Jimmy and he's not gonna play in front of DJ or bikes, but he's playing against those guys every day. And he doesn't understand the value of how that's gonna help him down the line. When we come back, fan questions from the Bradley Center for the coach. Stay with us.
This is the Aurora Sports Medicine Institute All Access segment and maybe the favorite segment for Coach all year long because you get to hear directly from the fans. Well, if we could, I'd like to do it every segment just to replace to you. To get rid of yeah, me. I'll just yeah. sit right here in the middle and look right at the camera. <laughs> Don't suggest that to management. I think they might like it. Here's the first question for the coach. Hey, hello, my name is Daniel Yeager. I go to Marquette University. I'm a freshman from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, I just have a quick question for Buzz Williams. Uh, me and all the fans here would uh, just like to know, how come you don't play Rob Frozina more? Daniel, I'd love to play Robert more. Uh, Rob's our best teammate and has been our best teammate. Rob's been in our program longer than anybody else. He's been with me ever since I've been here. Uh, he's just not very good. That's the real truth. Uh, but the flip side of that is we've got to be – uh, really good and ahead in order for him to play. And I think he's gotten better every day. He's an unbelievable person. He's extremely intelligent. Our guys love him, and we're thankful that he's here. Just to keep my role on the show, we throw it to the next question here for the coach. All right, I'm Maria Sapienza from Gurney, Illinois, and I want to ask you, Coach Buzz Williams, how much do you love this student section? Maria, I think it's the absolute best. Uh, more than you even understand, and I, I, I can tell that you're excited uh, to even ask that question, but more than you understand, our guys really appreciate the support they get from their peers. Uh, and I think that each game it's continued to get better. And over this stretch run, we've got four games at home left. It's going to be uh, extremely important that all of you and your friends are there because it's important to our guys. The last few minutes of that Syracuse game, Coach, you can't tell me that uh, crowd didn't get in Syracuse's head a little bit. I thought it was unbelievable. I, uh, I thought it was by far the best crowd we had had all year. And I think that, I, really, I, I don't know why, I think with this year's group, the student section, it means a lot to them. More than, not that it didn't in, to the previous two teams, I think our guys really pay attention to that. Next question for the coach. Hi, my name is Gina Stelf, and I'm from Milwaukee. And my coach for my question for Coach Williams is, end of the game, you're down to the wire, close games, you seem to have some trouble pulling through and winning. What's the strategy to change that? Hi, Gina, you're right. We've had, we've had some struggles late in the game. Uh, at, at Louisville is probably the worst you could uh, be a part of. It was almost like an out-of-body experience. We work on it every day, uh, but I don't necessarily think that it's uh, uh, X's and O's uh, as much as it is a mentality. And that's not me removing myself from the situation. Uh, that's me putting myself right in the middle of it. I've got to do a better job of leading our guys. And I think that winning against Syracuse in the fashion that we did will come back and help us. Uh, and hopefully it will help us in the same manner that losing at Louisville hurt us. We've got a question from a young fan for the coach. Uh, coach, I got a question. Um, if I want to get on my cut in the future, what do I have to do to get on it? Just keep working. That would be the only thing that I could tell you. I don't think that there are any magic pills in life. I don't think there's any tricks. Uh, you got to wake up and do the absolute best you can in school, be the absolute best person that you can be uh, in school and out of school. And if you want to be a basketball player or if you want to be an artist or if you want to be an astronaut, you got to work extremely hard to learn and to grow and to do the best that you can to be the best that God made you be. Final question for the coach from a veteran Marquette fan. Hi, I'm Bob Schrader from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Coach Buzz, is it difficult to recruit big men to Marquette, or is that you just like to play with a smaller, quicker unit? Hi, Bob. Thanks for your question. Uh, well, I, I think it's harder to recruit a big guy uh, no matter where you're employed. Uh, obviously, uh, God made a lot more six-foot-tall guys than he did 6'11 guys. Um, and the other thing is this, I think that uh, as much negativity maybe has been brought to when we play small, uh, really we've done really good with that. So I don't ever want to lose the fact that we can play, quote, small ball. But I think with the development of Chris and the development of Devante, I think those two big guys uh, give us a different perspective than we've been able to have in the last couple of years. And I'm excited about how those two guys are growing. Thanks, Coach, and thanks to all the fans for their questions. When we come back, we'll preview the game at Villanova on Inside Marquette Basketball with Buzz Williams.
back with the coach, and as you were saying earlier in the Big East Conference, just relentless as far as the, the teams that you have to face. Wednesday, you go to Pennsylvania to take on Villanova. Well, uh, you know, that's the good thing about our league is you want to compete at the highest level. And when you win, you feel like you're as good as anybody in the country. Uh, and when you lose, you realize you're about to have to play again against one of the best in the country. Um, we've played Villanova more times than any other team in our league. Uh, over the last two years, we've played them six times. The last two years, they've been our mirror opponents, and we've played them each time in the Big East tournament. It's, it's weird uh, that we're playing Villanova for the first time in February. Um, they're, they're similar uh, to what they've always been. Uh, they're playing their two big guys more. They're playing a, a legitimate four or five instead of a three playing the four like they've been the last couple of years. Uh, not playing near as many guys as they once did. Um, they have more big guys that are subs than they do guards. Uh, they sub one guard off the bench. Now that one guard was an All-American and he can play multiple positions. But for the most part, uh, Dennis, how they play and the way they want to play is pretty much the same. Uh, they've skewed it a little bit because they're a little bit more inside driven. Uh, number 13 is a really good player. Number 13 will end up being a better player than Rick Jackson uh, from Syracuse. Moof, they call him Moof. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I just know he's really good. Uh, and Antonio Pena, who's always been a thorn in our side, is a really good player that plays in the side for him as well. Um, they haven't lost a game in forever in the little gym there on campus. It's, it's, it's funny or ironic that it seems like we always have to play them there, but that's part of it. So we'll have our hands full. You used the word volatile earlier talking about the conference, but if anyone has any question about the strength of the Big East, how about St. John's beating Duke? I mean, that tells uh, you right you there. Know, and, and I don't, uh, I don't talk to a lot of coaches in our league. Uh, I do covertly, even though nobody knows that, but I don't think anybody was surprised. You know, I, I think that uh, losing Kyrie Irving in defense of Duke changes their team. I mean, he was the best freshman in the country, but um, – that's just, that's what it is, you know. Uh, it's St. John's. Uh, Coach Lavin's done a great job. They have nine seniors on the team. Playing Duke, doesn't. they're fine with that. They've played at Madison Square Garden 50 times in their career. So there's no, there's nothing that's happening that's surprising them. But, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see, does that win propel them? Or, you know, because whoever they play next, that's what their coach is saying. Hey, that, you know, they beat Duke. They're ready to play. It's just part of it. You guys will be on your way to South Florida. I'll be coming back from the Super Bowl no-show next week. Do okay. you have a Super Bowl pick? The Packers. Mm -hmm. Big? What, yeah, well, I, I don't think I don't, I don't know. Uh, let's do this. Um, what is the line? What is About the three? Yeah, I'll go eight. Oh, okay. Packers eight. Very good. Packers uh, eight. What, what are we betting, though? Um, well, I like the Packers, too, although not by that much. I'll go by three. Okay, so, so that means if the Packers win... By four or more, I win the bet. Okay, so what's the bet for? Uh, give me something when you're in Dallas that's an extra large. Okay, done deal. That's what do authentic. I get? That's what do authentic. I get? I'll get you something, something from in the Marquette it. Spirit Shop. And double X. How do you like that plug there? Got it in there. Good to see you. Coach, Thank good you. luck. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. That's okay. Inside Marquette Basketball with Buzz Williams. Inside Marquette Basketball with Buzz Williams was brought to you in part by the Aurora Sports Medicine Institute the exclusive sports medicine provider to Marquette University Athletics. U.S. Bank, a proud sponsor of Marquette Athletics. All of us serving you. And by AirTran Airways, go. There's nothing stopping you.